Hey guys, it's Michelle with Women Who Wow, the premier coaching and mentoring platform for the seriously driven woman entrepreneur. So if that is you, message me about joining Women Who Wow, m.me backslash women who wow. Today we are talking about um, what to do when you're feeling overwhelmed. And I wanna address this in two different ways, right? So I know that women entrepreneurs, we don't just run empires, right? Uh, especially those of us who are um, we're not playing around. We're not playing business. We are actually in this to win this. This is about an actual business that sustains us and our family and uh, perhaps creates even generational wealth. And so um, this can get sometimes overwhelming, right? Especially because we play so many other roles in our lives, right? So a lot of us are moms or we're sisters, we're daughters, we're um we are you know partners in some way and we just have a lot of balls in the air a lot of the time and so i want to address overwhelm in two different ways one is just the emotional overwhelm of like how do you deal with the emotion of overwhelm when you feel like you are um just kind of swimming in this feeling of not quite um you know, always being behind and you're overwhelmed with, you know, opportunity, but also like maybe the opportunities you haven't been able or felt like you weren't able to cash in on. So there's that emotional drain of overwhelm, right? But there's the second part that I want to talk with you about, which is the practical overwhelm issues, right? So the practical overwhelm, like what do I do? Because sometimes we are feeling overwhelmed, but in reality, we are being crowded out by to-do list. And, you know, there's a lot of people who will say, you know, outsource, and certainly if you can, and most of the time we can, but outsource, and other people are like, get those boundaries straight, you don't have to do all this stuff. But sometimes, life just kind of intersects with where we are, and there's a whole lot to do that I feel like is, um, you know, maybe superhuman, and we kind of have to go superhuman <laughs> in order to get it done, and there's nobody else to do it, and you maybe wouldn't want it, somebody else to do it. So I want to talk about the physical, like, how to of overwhelm as well, right? So I remember um, I had saved up uh, three thousand dollars, and three thousand dollars was a huge, huge amount of money back then. I had saved it up. That was how much it was going to cost to coach at the time with Fabian Fredrickson, and I think she's still out there coaching. But at the time, I wanted to coach with her, and I would saved up the three thousand dollars, which was her three month fee. And um, I filled out the questionnaire and essentially I had put on the questionnaire, she's like, what are the top challenges? And I'm like, well, that's really easy. I have no money and no time. And so like, I need more of both, right? And so she actually turned me away as a client and, um, and it, it stung a little bit, right, at the time. But I'm so glad that she did because um, she had children, like I had kids or maybe, yeah, I think she had kids at that time, one at least. But anyway, she had um, she had chosen to move an au pair into her home in order to like deal with the having no time because you've got these young kids. And so for me, nothing against it and nothing against her, but for me, when I would say I'm overwhelmed with being mom and wife and mom, you know, and, and all of this stuff, like her response, her answer would have been, hey, get an au pair, get somebody else to do the mom stuff. And so for me though, I wanted to do the mom stuff. That's why this business was born. I wanted to be there for my kids. I wanted to be the person who did the things for my kids. And so anyway, it wasn't a match. And ever since then, I kind of have uh, felt like the practical advice uh, to women entrepreneurs who are dealing with real and practical overwhelmed from too many things that truthfully they do have to do that do have to get done and they either have to be or want to be the person who does them um has a, i feel like it's fallen a little short and so i did get an email from one of our women who wow members and i'm not going to say who it is but she basically she has a million her she says i have a million things to do a live event in 30 days her husband's injured and can't drive, so she's doing the errands, she's doing the doctor's appointments for her husband, plus 
Her kids are not in district. They have to be driven to school. That's a 50 minute commute every single day. And that does not include time in the, um, you know, it's only time on the road. It doesn't include time like in the drop off line, if you guys remember those days. And she's used to working from home without distraction. Now, hubby's home, massive distraction and a lot of things on her plate. You can see this is very temporary. It's very, um, this is just her season, but the practical reality is that she's super overwhelmed with things that have to get done and she's on a time um, crunch with the event and all this other stuff. So I want to deal with the emotional overwhelm and then the practical, like how do you get it done? So emotional, um, so Lisa says, that's where I'm at now. I'm, I'm in the car ride line to get my girls. <laughs> yeah. Side note, the person who wrote me this email did not mention the car ride line. She just said that it's 25 minutes each way on the road and I added in the car line I didn't want to say that to her because I didn't want her to get more overwhelmed but like I get it right like it takes 25 minutes to get there and that was my commute when my kids were in private school um Luckily, it was close to my husband, so he did the morning commute mostly. But, um, you know, I would, you know, you sit in the car line forever. You get there a few minutes early. You wait. Everybody gets their kids in. It's like it always, it always, like, shocked me how long it took for people to get their kids in or out of the car, right? Like, nowadays, I'm probably sure it's probably worse because I think kids are in car seats until they're, like, 10 or something, right? Like, my kids are older, so uh, after about two, they weren't really in car seats. They might have been in bumper seats or something. But, so, I want to talk about about the, oh, the emotional part of the overwhelm first, right? And I totally get the emotional overwhelm, the feeling like, uh, and here's the way I describe it, it feels like everything is crowding in on you at one time. It feels crowded and kind of pressed in. And um, so for me, like during the summer months, right? So I love to work from home. There have been years that I've had an office outside of the home, but I don't prefer it. I prefer to work from here. And in the summer months, though, you figure not only did my husband, who's a public school teacher, and not only was he home, but also all three of the kids were home, and they were excited to be home, and they, you know, they were young, and they wanted to go to the water park, and to the beach, and all of this stuff, right? And so, these are things that I wanted to, but this is the emotional overwhelm, where I felt like things, life was just crowding in, and I just, I never, and the, the big thing for me in the overwhelm is, I never really felt felt like, well, I got overwhelmed when I felt like I didn't have space to kind of be myself, right? To kind of focus on me. I know that kind of sounds selfish. I would have never put it into those words back then, to be totally honest, because um, it would have felt like, well, of course not. You're a mother, right? But I'm not the mom I could be or should be if I don't take the time to kind of release my own crazy, right? So, um, in growing up, I was the same way. Like growing up, I grew up in a very rural area, very similar to, and, and close to where I live now. And, um, and, but I would, I would go out into the wide open space all the time. That was my like jam. That was where I got healthy. It's like, I would feel like I needed to release, right? And so I didn't do drugs um, or anything like that, um, but I would run or I would just go for a walk. I would go into the field when I was young. I would climb trees, anything to get into the wide open space because I didn't like to be crowded in. In college, I went to school at Virginia Tech. It's a pretty big school even back then, but I knew every hidey hole where I could get alone, where I could have some space and time of my own. Um, when I was at a large event in San Diego, uh, it's a huge, I'm talking like huge event. It took over several hotels hotels and there were thousands upon thousands of people there and um, that kind of stuff overwhelms me and so I would literally I found this spot and it was so funny because I found this spot and it was like a it was under like a little corner overhang it was kind of like in the corner in the floor and I was like I'm gonna sit there and just kind of you know be away from all the people and stuff. And so I'm sitting there and I'm just like breathing and just enjoying my little open, you know, quiet time or whatever. And I look across the, uh, the way and I see a huge, huge podcaster. Um, everybody knows his name, right? And I see him across the way and he is in the exact same position as me, right? He's like in this little corner, this like little overhang and he's just sitting there like being by himself. And I thought that was really funny and indicative of 
who we are, right? As high, uh, high drive performers and high drive, um, you know, women and he, he's a man, but whatever. So the emotional overwhelm, my, um, my tendency is to like get into that wide open space, but here are some strategies for the overwhelm. So one, I definitely rope off the time. Even if I have to like wake up early or stay up late or even sneak out of bed in the middle of the night, like I have to have some time that is all of my own. And so I encourage you to do that. Um, a lot of times, in my own personal opinion, you know, that actually will help you take the place of sleep, right? Like sleep kind of comes easy to me, but um, when you are feeling pressed in and overwhelmed and crowded in terms of schedule and, and space, then you know, finding any time that you can where you know you won't be interrupted is a critical, critical component to you beating and overcoming emotional overwhelm. I also journal, um, and that's something that allows me, again, I have to have the time and space to journal or else I don't really let my crazy out. I don't let the, you know, I, I don't like release the way I need to. I'll get up, I'll walk, I'll run. Like when I, my kids were little, I would run. That's where I fell in love with running and it never really did anything for my weight, unfortunately. Um, but running was just a mental exercise for me. It still is to this day. Um, but for the emotional overwhelm, it's really a decision and a commitment, um, as well as an acceptance, right? It's like, this is just this season. It is temporary. Um, right now, like I have, you know, my, my kids are older and, uh, one of them lives, you know, a couple hours away. And so I'm, I'm, very aware that it is a very a short season to have all of these things on you. Um, they will go away one day. Um, so it's an, it, but so accepting it as part of the season, not like it's something wrong or that there's something wrong with you because you need this extra time to be by yourself or, you know, whatever, like not making the family wrong and not making the business wrong, just kind of accepting it as a busy season. I never did that. And I so wish that I had it. I always looked for a way out. I always looked for like, I, I got worse into my overwhelm because I wanted to fix it. And so acceptance is huge for emotional overwhelm. We'll get to the practical in a minute. Um, a decision and a commitment to have some time on your own is absolutely critical. You've got to have that time to, and you've got to protect that time. Um, and sometimes, you know, frankly, you know, maybe I would have, should have been better with boundaries or whatever else, but sometimes that meant I just had to wake up before the rest of the world woke up. And I still do that to this day. I really appreciate that time. So that's the emotional overwhelm, but I really came to this training to talk about the practical overwhelm, right? This is the, um, the practical overwhelm there's literally just too much to do and it's too much for one person and it's too much for you and yet it still has to get done and so like quit your bitch and put your 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 big girl panties on and, and do it right that's where you are that's the, the the practical overwhelm is like listen this isn't I don't have time for a discussion on like boundaries and I might not have a team yet I certainly don't have time to train one like this has to get done right now so that's what I talk about that's what I really came to talk about um, today so the first First step when you are feeling overwhelmed with the practical things that have to get done by you and on a quick timetable. The first thing is I want you to create your bare minimum strategy. Um, this has two components. One of them is your bare minimum activities, right? Something you're going to do every single day. So I message every single day, not most days and not you know, when I feel like it or when the muse strikes, I message every single day. And so uh, the bare minimum strategy for me is I wake up, I uh, read my Bible, I journal, I message, I do my entrepreneurial espresso, obviously for my members. And that's, and, and then I also do a sales activity. So that is something I do every single day. It doesn't take me that long, right? I can usually do all of that at least within an hour. And so I encourage you to come up with your bare minimum um, activities, things that keep, now this is not related to this person's event because that would be extra, right? But this is what keeps your business moving forward. And so your bare minimum strategy is your list of activities that keep your business going, you know, forward is a pace as that, as, uh, the Peloton, um, runner says, but forward is a pace and, um, it keeps your business moving forward. The other part of a bare minimum strategy is a, um, 
is the time that you're gonna rope off for your business. Now, sometimes one day you might have one hour to spend on your business. Another day you might have 20 minutes or you might have two hours or you might think you have one hour but you end up with three hours. So you wanna have a bare minimum strategy. Your bare minimum activities planned in advance and prepared for so you go into that time prepared to get the stuff done. So if you need research or you need like, you know, something beside your um, your computer or whatever, you have all of that planned in advance. And then you have an overflow list, frankly, because sometimes you think you have an hour and you have more. And so you have an overflow list of things that you'd like to get done if you have the extra time. Another um, bare minimum strategy for times of practical overwhelm is to have a list of um, like 10 minute activities. A list of activities that you can do in 10 minutes. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't love to run my business like this on a daily basis because it feels crowded, right? It feels emotionally overwhelming. But when it's practically overwhelming, I need to get stuff done, I will have a 10 minute list. And that means that whether I'm waiting in the car line or I am, um, you know, a, a call with a client ended early, I have right beside me a list of thing, activities that I can do in 10 minutes. It takes the second guessing out of it, it takes the planning out of it you can just go to it and start crossing things off your list it's a great strategy if you are practically overwhelmed there's just too much for you to do another strategy when you are really overwhelmed uh, Lisa said her girls are requiring more of her the person who wrote this said her husband and, and her kids are requiring more of her business keeps growing business opportunities keep coming in this is a good problem to have but you don't want to resent your business and you don't want to resent your family for that and so I encourage you to let life in during these periods right so kind of just accept that you're in a busy season and that you're gonna have some roped off time for your bare minimum strategy. You're gonna get done what you can, right? And then let life come in. It's almost like at the ocean, you know, it's like it comes in, but it always goes back. And this is just, it's gonna subside. So let it in, don't fight it. Don't go into every day in a tizzy where you're like rushing, rushing, rushing. That actually takes away your productivity. It also takes away the heart that you might be able to bring to whatever work that you're doing. So make sure that you are just letting life in. Don't fight against it, right? So have your bare minimum strategy, which includes roped off time and a list of activities. Have your 10 minute activities there so you can like cross through them quickly when you get those unexpected pockets of time. Know that it's temporary. And finally, allow for some magic. Um, this, this really, the allowing for magic, it required me to kind of rework my ironclad mindset of, around like hard work and money and success, right? Like I'm an eight to eight kind of Southern mentality, like hard work and money doesn't grow on trees. And you know, like that's how, that's how I am. That's how I was raised. That's who I am. And so for me to have periods of where I couldn't just go balls to the wall in my uh, business, I had to start to rework that mindset and allow for some magic. And I also started trusting in the foundation of my business, right? I've been at this for 20 years and I have built a foundation that um, deliberately keeps money coming in and keeps sales coming in and keeps me in front of the right people. And so trusting in the foundation and also setting intentions that sales are going to be easy or I'm going to there's time will expand for me today setting intentions allowing for things to be easier than I expect really helps when I'm um, in times of overwhelm it's also a great rate uh, time for you to stretch your muscle around your, this kind of mindset and so I encourage you to do that as well so um, I hope this helps the person who emailed me I hope it helps anybody watching and if you have any specific questions um, then please let me know uh, you can put them in the comments below or you can message me m.me backslash women who wow uh, overwhelm is something that definitely can get in the way of us creating wild success on our own terms so um, you know don't just tolerate it right use these strategies to accept it to work around it and um, but if I can help you in any way definitely let me know I appreciate you guys being here live. I appreciate um, those of you who are watching the replay. And again, if you are a seriously driven woman entrepreneur, message me about joining Women Who Wow. M.me backslash Women Who Wow. Talk to you later. Bye.